Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Welcome back to our engine build project on our 2012 Polaris Razor 900 XP. As you can see, we've already got the bottom end put back together, so now it's time to get the top end done. So, let me go grab a couple of tools, well, more than a couple of tools, a whole toolbox, and we'll get it put back together. Let's go ahead and get the chained tensioners in place. I'm going to go ahead and do the fixed one first. And we'll go ahead and put in the one where you actually have tension on it. And these are both held in by just a couple of six millimeter Allens. Now we need to get the key put in. And we'll want to lightly tap it in place. And maybe tilt it toward the front just a tick. That way it'll uh, right over the top of it. We do want to put just a little bit of oil on the starter clutch surface right in here. Alright, let's go and get this intermediate bearing on there for the starter. It's held in by just a circlip. Alright, let's put a little dab of oil on the back side of where the taper is, back here, and let's get that flywheel on. Alright, let's go ahead and get this flywheel bolt back on. And what we're going to need to do is hold the flywheel still with a strap and then put 133 foot-pounds on it. I want to make sure it doesn't get caught up on the chain. And let's see if I can get 133 foot-pounds on it. All right, guys, well, we got her on there. Whew, about threw my shoulder out doing that. All right, for right now, we're going to push this to the side. I'm going to bring the, uh, the teardown bench around, and we're going to start preparing the head. This was actually a very, very high performance engine that was built for it and the bottom end just completely let go as we saw. So I'm basically taking it back to a stock configuration. This particular head has been ported, when I say ported, when you look down the intakes, you can see just how much metal was taken out. And they did actually did a really nice job. But the other thing uh, that I can't really ignore at this point is that they also decked the head. And wh what I mean by that is they took off a fair amount of uh, material on this side. That in turn raises your compression. And if you're building a high performance engine, that's what you want. Well, we're not building a high compression engine. I want it to last. The other thing that that would affect is when you lower the head, it actually shifts the timing. And so we'd have to have adjustable camshafts on this as well to correct for that. Well, we don't. We're putting back in the stock cams and the stock uh, camshaft gears. So, that being said, I'm going to put this to the side and then we're going to build this one up from scratch. And you're going to notice as I go along, I'm going to number everything. You know, all the valves, intake and exhaust. So, let's get these out of the way and we'll get started on that part. Could I have uh, reused the valves out of the other head? Yeah, probably. But I want to be sure that this motor lasts a long time. All right, everybody's back out. The chances are this is going to be really simple. Everything should line up fairly well and have a nice groove in there. What we're going to do just for fun is coat one of these before it's been lapped with a, what they call Prussian blue. And what's that? Uh, it's a type of dye that actually shows you where metal is making contact. So let's take one of our exhaust and we're just going to lightly coat it. Go ahead and pop it in and then we'll be able to see where all it's hitting. All right, one of two ways you can do this. Either use one of these little, I guess you call it lapping tools that actually attach to the valve on the side via a suction cup or just a uh, quarter inch piece of um, fuel line, just slide it over the valve stem on the other side. Then we just turn it back and forth a few times. All right, let's pop her out. All right. We're looking for a consistent blue impression all the way around, roughly the width of this tip of this pick tool. And that is pretty much exactly what we're looking at. That actually looks really good. So it's not going to take hardly any lapping at all to get this in there correctly. 
So let's get that clean back off and then we'll start the lapping process. All right, grab our valve. It doesn't take a lot of this stuff. This is basically just a, an abrasive in a grease base, if you want to call it that. All right, and now that we're going to be putting a little bit of pressure on the stem itself, let's go ahead and just put a little bit of oil on it. So the last thing I want to do is scar that surface. Now you want to be very careful as you're doing this not to let any of that material get onto the valve stem. That would be bad. Now when we start this off, it's going to sound a little gritty and that's okay, that's what we want. But as I go further and further, it pushes more of that out of the way and it'll start to, you know, you won't hear it as much. See how it goes away? Now just lift it up a little bit, get some more of that material drawn back in. Just like that. All right, let's go and pull her out. And that should take care of it. Now we want to make very sure that we clean out all of that material because that would be catastrophic to say the least. Typically, on one that is as close as this is, four to five times, starting at the beginning, wait for it to be quiet, that's about all it's going to take. And just for fun, we'll put the Prussian blue back on there again, then take one more peek. Oh yeah, nice blue line all the way around. That one's ready to go. Now, all I gotta do is do the same thing for all the other ones. And uh, then we'll st start actually installing the valves once that's done. All right, so what's next? We've got our valves lapped in. Next, we need to go ahead and get in the seals. I want y'all to be really careful about this. The older type heads use this little small seal. Well, this is one of the newer type heads and it uses a completely different va valve stem seal. So make sure you get the correct part number if you're replacing the head. All right, to get them on there, what we're going to do is just use a socket, make sure it's lined up evenly, and just tap it into place. Not a lot of pressure required. It's basically replacing the, uh, the, the seal and that lower, um, if you want to call it a seat, that the, uh, the old springs used. All right, let's go ahead and get all of those put on, and then we'll start installing the valves. All right, when we lap the valves, remember we had uh, numbered each one. So I've got them laid out like they're gonna go in. I still have my numbers on there. I do wanna give them one last cleaning before we go in. The reason you lay them out is now that I've sprayed it with a contact cleaner, if I get any on that, uh, that bottom side, the number's gonna disappear. All right, when you're assembling this, use just a little bit of this assembly lube to go onto the valve stem itself. All right, after you put on your assembly lube, just hold that seal in place, and then install your valve. Otherwise, it'll pop it right off. Now, here comes the fun part. Each of these springs is different from the top to the bottom. The bottom is where the springs or the coils are closer together, so you want to make sure that goes in first. Then your upper. Well, here's the really fun part. This is when you need a third hand. I'm using the vise to at least hold the uh, compression tool in one place. Get it compressed down just far enough to get the keepers in there. We don't want to over compress the, uh, the spring itself. All right, little trick right here. Get a dab of grease, put it on the inside of the keeper as you're putting them in there. That way, once they get actually near the valve stem, they don't have a tendency to jump out at that point. Varying ways to do this. I typically uh, get them both in the, at the top of that cup and then use just a pick tool to get them down into position. Once I get them in, I usually just pop it just a little bit to make sure they're seated. All right, now all I gotta do is that seven more times. So let's get it finished. All right, we've got our valves in place. Everything looks like it's seated correctly. Now we need to start working on settling, setting the valve lash on this particular machine. So we need to get a baseline so we can see what clearance we do have. What I've done is I've went ahead and pulled out a full set of 250s, the 250 shims. I'm gonna go in and install all of those, put the cams in place, and then measure to see what our clearances are, and then add or adjust from that point. So let's get it all put together and start doing some measurements. Pretty easy. All you have to do is just put them on top of the valve 
and they'll just sit in there. Make sure they sit all the way down flat. All right, next, go ahead and put your, uh, your cups in. Remember, I had these numbered on the bottom. I transferred those number, numbers up top. Since they're already numbered, we'll put them in the places that corresponds. All right, just to verify that you're getting the, uh, the cams in the right position, the very end of the uh, intake of, in the exhaust, it's a very light marking. One ends in a 52, and the other one ends in a 53. The intake being the 52, and there's your 52. So this is your intake. All right. When you're doing this, you just want to make sure that the uh, the valves are pointed up. We're going to go ahead and do our intake side first. We're going to lay our exhaust cam in there, which we'll get to later. And if you don't have an angled set of feeler gauges like this, I recommend that you get some. It makes life a lot easier. All right, I've got my first measurement. What I'm going to do is just go around to all of them, write down what that measurement is, and then we'll go back and see where we need to add and uh, adjust the, uh, the thickness of the shims. All right, we've got everything measured. I've got them all written down over here. We started off with um, 250s across the board, and that's in all locations. What you'll do is you go to your chart, take your measurement, which in this case was 0.229, find the range that it's going to fit in, which is going to be 0.226 to 0.250, and then you come across to the 250 range, and that tells you that if you come down, that's going to be a 258. So, I'm going to go back through, I'm going to lift this off, go back through, and then I'm going to exchange my 250s for whatever that chart tells me it should be. Make sure you keep everything in the same order. All right, we got our new shims in place, got our tappets in place. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, once again put in the cams just temporarily, and then we're going to check our measurements, make sure they're within range. All right, once again, when you make your measurement, you want to make sure your lobes are pointing up at the same angle as the, uh, the valve stem itself. So about right there. And also remember, that your intake and exhaust have different tolerances. Your tolerance for your intake is somewhere in between 0.125 and 0.175 millimeters or in between five and seven thousandths if you're measuring uh, in inches. So each intake needs to be one of these three. Let's see where we are. All right. right in the middle. That's where I want to be. I'll accept one of the other two, but that middle one, that's what I want. All right, the intake's looking good. Want to check the exhaust, and that's going to be on, in between 0.275 and 0.325 millimeters, or either, or uh, if you're doing standard, 11 to 13 thousandths. All my measurements check out. Here's what we need to do next. Let's go ahead and take them back off one more time and go ahead and get assembly lube on all the buckets, on all the, sh um, the top of the tappets, and then in the, uh, the bearing riding surfaces here and here. Well, guess what? Now it's time to carry it on over and get it torqued down on the block. So let's get that done next. All right, we're not gonna need this plate anymore to at least hold it down. What we will use this plate for is it goes on the back side of the camshafts to hold them in place. There's a couple of slots on either of the cams that this will just slide into and hold them in place while we set the timing. But speaking of timing, let's go ahead and bring the crank around to top dead center. All right, where do you find that? What you're looking for here is there's a line right here on the flywheel and you want to line it up where the case halves meet. So right there. All right, and that should be top dead center for us. Now we can go ahead and get our uh, our head gasket, get that on, and then actually lift the head onto the, uh, the cylinder. All right, and this just goes on dry. Make sure the surfaces are clean, lined up with the dowels. We'll just lay the chain right there, and I'll just grab it in a few minutes, or a few seconds rather, with a, a magnet. Let's tap it and see if we can get her to sit down. All right, guys, time to go ahead and put in our head bolts. 
Polaris does require that we install new ones because these are stretch bolts. And once they get stretched that first time, you can't really reuse them again now, can you? Start off, I'm just going to get them in their hand tight and then we'll start going through the process of getting them torqued down. All right, the, uh, the tightening sequence is thus. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's two stages. The first one, we're going to take it to 21 foot-pounds. All right, next, we want to take it up to 26 foot-pounds. Same sequence. All right, step three, or stage three, is 180 degrees now. So start off here, pick out another point, 180 out. There she is. While we're at it, let's go ahead and get these two on the end. And the torque on these is 89 inch pounds. Next, let's go ahead and get some lube on our cams. Get it on the lobes, the bearing surfaces, and get them installed. These carrier bolts are also set to 89 inch pounds. But I don't want to torque them quite yet. I just want to get them held in place. Next, let's go ahead and get these cam gears off. Probably could have done that before. All right, next, let's get this plate I was talking about earlier installed. On the exhaust side, it'll just slide in. Uh, on the intake, you're going to have to use a wrench, bring it up just slightly. And that's going to be where they need to stay while we set the timing on this thing. All right, we want to start with the intake gear first. The difference is one has an E and one has an I stamped on it. So it didn't matter if you didn't keep up with which one was which. But what we want to end up happening is we want the intakes to be sitting in there like that when the chain's on. So let's grab our chain, put it where we think it's going to be, and verify that you're at top dead center down here. And what we want to go ahead and do is get that top bolt in. All right, with that one in place, let's go ahead and grab that exhaust gear. All right, that was a little bit off. Let's move it over one tooth. All right, we've verified our marks. What I want to do now is go ahead and torque these down to 14 foot-pounds. All right, we can go ahead and remove this plate. Bring up so we can get those other two bolts in place. All right, next, let's go ahead and get our camshaft carrier in place. A little assembly lube on here as well. We have to knock them around a little bit to get them to line up. All right, don't forget your uh, upper cam chain guide. And remember, we need to tighten all of these, and of course, there's a sequence. All right, all of these are going to be 89 inch pounds. It goes something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then 11, 12 up here. So let's get these things torqued down. All right, with all of those torqued down, let's go ahead and get our, uh, our cam chain tensioner back in place. Make sure that little crush washer is still there. All right, so 27 millimeter, and she takes 29.5 foot-pounds. That's it. All right, now it's gonna to start to get a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and get the, uh, the valve cover back on. Then I'll bring over the, uh, this cover, which has the, uh, the, the stator in it. Go ahead and get that mounted up. And guys, we're gonna be getting dangerously close to actually taking it off the engine stand and getting it back in the machine. So let's get these couple of covers put on. All right, we've got our seal in place. Let's go ahead and get the cover on there. Hopefully this will be the last time that I ever have to look in this engine. And I went ahead and replaced these uh, upper cushions. Those uh, the old ones, they were kind of uh, crunchy to say the least. No real magic here. Just tighten them till they bottom down. Let's go ahead and get our idler gear in there and uh, get that magneto cover on. 
right? When you're putting this thing on, it has some powerful magnets in it. And you do not want to get your fingers caught in, in between uh, those two edges. So be real careful when you're doing this. See what I'm talking about? And the absolute last thing you want to do at this stage of the game is to drop anything into here. So that's basically the bottom of the engine. So let's cover up that hole. All right, all these are set to 106 inch pounds. And of course, like all the other ones, they have some weird pattern about it which I've uh, drawn on the cover itself. Well, guess what, kids? We're actually finished with the basic engine build. So what's next? Well, I'm gonna get the machine back in here and then we're gonna start getting every, everything hooked back up to this, uh, the intake, the, uh, the water pump. Then we're gonna get it slung into the frame and get it fired up. So now you wanna come back to the next uh, installment and see that. Well. If you need any of the parts that we use to get it this far, come find us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. Have any questions or comments, just leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And until next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.